and his wife will kill us. Well, there is that. <laughs> I mean, there is a big volcano right here, so. Um, and even at the University of Kansas, we do the same thing. When I got married, my wife would complain that there were always computer disks in my underwear drawer. And she was like, Tom, why are you bringing stuff home from the office and putting it in the drawer with your underwear? And it's just, it, I know that in Mark's underwear drawer, there are copies of our database. And he knows that in my underwear drawer, it's just a code. And we would even make a copy on a CD and mail it to a friend of ours in Philadelphia. What's the probability that something happens both in Kansas and in Philadelphia? Okay, so you can reduce probability of failure to very low. You can't really reduce it to zero. So these are the points that I just made. You know, we should probably fly home on two planes, right? So just think about it. Whatever you do in life, what can go wrong? will go wrong, right? I can't figure out if that's a photograph or a painting, but I couldn't <laughs> resist. Okay. Um, questions about data security? Comments? Comments about data security? So, you know, things won't go wrong in San Francisco and in Canada <coughs> at the same time. I mean, this is a backup of my computer that everything is on, right? I, I carry a copy with me pretty much everywhere from work. Um, I also think that, you know, you all probably are going to have digital cameras in the field. One of our practices in the field is that we take pictures of our field catalog basically every day. It's digital, right? Um, as, mu as soon as we have time, we usually transcribe our field catalog to an Excel file. And that might not be in the field, but it might be within the next day as soon as you get home. Um, but if you have those backups of images, you know, if you use Dropbox or use any other way of, you know, moving files, just email them to yourself. And you have a backup of your field catalog that's, n it's not on a computer, it's in the cloud somewhere, right? Yeah. Uh, and those are really simple, but can be, you know, in the end, save you from losing everything. And those digital files are easy in some sense, to email home, yeah. to upload. Um, and also, if you do that transcription stage right away, you know, don't say, oh, I'm going to do that in yeah. July when it's the rainy season and I can't go out to the field. Because you do that transcription and you realize, oh, somebody forgot to write down this body mass. Or, you know, was that at this site or this site? some of those things you can fix because you still have it fresh in your memory. You can also invest in a fireproof safe for your USB keys and stuff so that you don't have to leave them out in your order. That's where I keep mine when I'm at home. <laughs> but doesn't a fireproof safe get hot when, when your house burns down? Hopefully. At least it'll yeah. <laughs> If I die, it might still be Yes, sir. <laughs> so, thanks again. Um, I just had a case of data loose in my university mm -hmm. because there's a lot of work that has been done by Amiet and Peret, and we were supposed to have some collection at the University of Yaoundé. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that is that with the time, nobody's taking care of the collection, so it's. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know because I've tried to talk to the responsible of the, the, the one of my lecturers at the university about how to manage the collection that we had and how to build a new one. He said mostly it comes through the, the organization of the university, mm -hmm. but they still don't have enough fund to take good care of the, 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 the collection. So. No, my main concern is, like me, I'm collecting data in the field, but where should I start help? Because I think Nono also has the same problem because he's keeping his collection at home mm -hmm. because we don't have, but even at home, mm -hmm. it's not the best way because I think it's data is always useful 
when it's somewhere that people can have access. Right. No, it's, so it, you make very good points. Uh -huh. um, and I was having the same discussion with Dr. Folkham yesterday. Um, Cameroon has an herbarium, um, but does not appear to have <coughs> large-scale institutional zoological collections. And so what do you do? Well, you, you seek some sort of, you, you make the best of a, of a bad situation. Um, so at the least, can there be a building with a sprinkler system if there's a fire? Right? And that's particularly important for specimens that are stored in flammable liquid. Um, but certainly, some sort of fire protection is, is big. Um, theft protection, you know, some place with security. Um, and many times in this interim, while there's not an institution, many times that might be a university laboratory or something of that sort. Um, but it is a difficult situation. So we've done a, an entire week-long course on building biodiversity informatics institutions, and we can pass you those links. Um, is there a good solution? Maybe not. Um, in, in different countries, I know people who keep, you know, undescribed species of birds, the only specimens in the world, in a box under their bed, right? Because it, upon his calculation, that was the very best place to keep it, the very safest. Um, is it good? Is that a good situation? Not at all. Um, now, data and specimens are different. Mm -hmm. Data will hopefully be digital, or they at least can be you know, imaged or digitized. And so it's pretty easy to leave a copy somewhere. And you know, if, you're, if your mother and father live in a different place, leave a copy there. You know, that sort of thing. I mean, that, that level you can, you can get that replication. You know, you can send an envelope to a friend in, on another continent and just say, will you just please hold this for me, right? Specimens are far harder than that yeah. because in some sense, each specimen is unique. Sorry about the pessimistic answer. <laughs> One more question. Thank you so much, Joe. Um, so you've talked much about uh, data sharing, because I, I guess this is raw data. You're from the field and you have your data, you want to secure it enough, you share with your friend. In case of plagiarism, what do you do? <laughs> In case of plagiarism, what do you do? Um, so plagiarism is more at the level of, uh, yeah, that's Murphy's Law, by the way. <laughs> if you were transcribing data and your, and your computer doesn't have a good battery, you just lost your data. Um, plagiarism is usually re used to refer to in terms of theft of text, right? You write something, publish it, or make it available in some sense, and somebody else takes that text and uses it for something else. Or it might be ideas. Um, if we're talking about data, um, certainly there are cases of just outright theft. You know, you've been working for two years on your thesis project, and somebody comes along and grabs those data and publishes the paper that you were going to publish. Um, so certainly there is a there's a, an interval where you're working very hard, you're out in the field for months gathering your data, and in some sense those data, I would say, belong to you in the sense that you've put the time in and you should um, be able to, to pull out the academic rewards, right? Writing the paper or achieving some synthesis. Now, how do I reconcile that? Obviously, you know, Kate's working really hard right now on her thesis. And if somebody were to come along right now, if Rafe were all of a sudden to publish uh, some nice ecological niche models of, of albatross distributions in the Southern Oceans, both Kate would be upset and I would be upset. 
And maybe we would invite him to move to another institution. Um, but there's a point where you've collected your data and maybe you've written the paper or maybe you've decided to do something else with your career or maybe you don't like to write papers and it doesn't happen. In some sense, what are those data? Those data are documentation of the biodiversity, in your case of Uganda. And in some sense, the biodiversity of Uganda does not belong to anybody. Probably belongs more to Ugandans than to anybody else. But it doesn't belong to you or the president of Uganda. It belongs to everybody. And in that sense, the data associated with those that biodiversity also don't really belong to anybody. So my personal feeling is that you have some short period of time, months to years, but not more than a few years, in which those data belong to you and you should do your science with them and you know, squeeze out whatever interesting products are in there. And then you get to some point where, no, it's time to open these data. Hopefully you've written your paper and you've gotten your degree and your career is moving along and you've gone on to another project. But if you haven't, the data and their importance um, are more important than your or my personal advancement. And so that, we could call it a statute of limitations or you know, some, some time interval where the data are yours and after that, it's time to open the data up. And now, what are those time intervals is a bit hard. You know, like Rafe's been working in the Philippines for 25 years and accumulating tons and tons and tons of specimens. And he might say, well, I'm working towards my, my lifetime synthesis of Philippine biodiversity. And so I've got, I've got dibs on, on this information until the end of my career. That's probably a little selfish, right? Um, I, I have to say that in my own case, I try to live by the sword and die by the sword. So what I do is, with very rare exceptions, I do my data collection and I put the data out there in the open for whomever wants it immediately. And I figure I'll write the paper probably before anybody else can do it. Probably nobody else would care, right? But the point is, in my case, again, it's live by the sword, die by the sword. When, the, when I come back from this trip, the data will be online as soon as the data are digital. And if somebody wants to turn that into a paper that documents a new record of a species for Cameroon or something like that, so be it. I should have written the paper faster, okay? But maybe you, working on your master's degree, maybe you should give yourself a short period of time in which you take your data and write your data up, okay? <laughs>